So how much does charging an electric car cost? Well, it depends. I recently broke down the cost of charging my Tesla Model 3 over the first 10,000 miles and it only came out to $66.57. As many people pointed out, this is extremely low, partly because I have free charging at work and also have a lot of free supercharger miles from the Tesla referral program. Obviously not everybody has access to free charging like that, so today I'm gonna to be breaking down how much I would have paid if I didn't have access to that free charging. And I'll be looking at three different categories using my car as an example home charging, level two public charging, and supercharging. In reality, you won't charge at any single one of these exclusively. It'll probably be a mix of all three depending on where you are able to plug in. And how much you spend on charging can vary a lot as well depending on how efficient you drive and what kind of EV you're driving. Just like someone with a gas car that gets 20 miles per gallon will spend more on gas than somebody that has a 40 miles per gallon car. These are just my estimates based on how efficient my car is and my charging experiences. So over 10,000 miles, my car used 2,953 kilowatt hours. Hours. But that is just how much my car used, not necessarily how much I took from the grid and how much energy I paid for. For AC charging, wall-to-wheel efficiency is about 85%, which means if I take 10 kilowatt hours from the grid, my car is only able to use about eight and a half kilowatt hours. And this is just due to energy losses while charging. Things like heat, light, and just internal charging losses are wasted and don't end up making it their way into the battery. So all I have to do is divide by 0.85 to get the actual amount of energy that I got from the grid and not what my car used. And that comes out to 3,474 kilowatt hours. For home charging, my electricity rate is about 14.6 cents per kilowatt hour. So if I charged exclusively at home, I would have paid for 3,474 kilowatt hours over 10,000 miles. So if I multiply that electricity rate by the energy used, it comes out to a little over $507, which honestly isn't too bad. It's roughly five cents per mile. Public charging gets a little more difficult to estimate just because some are completely free some charge per hour, some charge per kilowatt hour, so it can get a little confusing depending on what kind of charger you are using. In researching for this video, I found that most chargers average between 15 cents per kilowatt hour and 30 cents per kilowatt hour, but fortunately there were a ton of free ones when I was looking, so that is very good and proves that you can charge your car completely for free if you want to, you just gotta do a little bit more hunting. But again, using my car as an example with paid public charging, that could range anywhere from $521 over 10,000 miles to $1,024 over 10,000 miles, just depending on what the rate of the charger is. And finally is supercharging. Because I drive a Tesla, this is typically what I use for fast charging and the most convenient for me when I am traveling. These can get a bit confusing too, even though they're all on Tesla's network. Some charge per kilowatt hour, some are free, some charge per minute, and they actually charge different rates depending on what power level they are putting out as well. But to make things simple for this video, the average cost of supercharging in the United States is about 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So again, if we use my car as an example and my efficiency to charge up over 10,000 miles, it would have cost me about $903. So how do all these stack up? Well, home charging here is the cheapest, which is fortunate because that is where a majority of EV charging actually takes place. Most people just come home from work or whatever they're doing throughout the day, plug in their car and let it charge overnight, and it's all charged up when they're ready to go in the morning. If you own a Tesla and wanna save even more money charging at home, you can check out today's video spot sponsor Optowatt. In some locations, electricity costs can be more expensive at certain times of day, so you could be overpaying for electricity when your Tesla is charging. Optiwatt is an online app that connects to your Tesla account and can schedule charging for you to take advantage of cheaper electricity rates overnight. For example, if you get home from work and plug in your car, you might be paying peak rates for a few hours before everyone goes to bed and those rates drop back down. If you use OptiWatch, it will automatically start and stop charging when rates are low so you are paying the lowest amount possible to charge your car. All you have to do is set your desired state of charge and when you want to depart, and OptiWatch handles the rest. To sign up, you can go to getoptiwatt.com or visit the link in the description. So charging at home is obviously the most convenient. You just do it where you live, but public charging can be a good option as well if you're someone like me that lives in an apartment and doesn't have access to home charging. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of businesses are starting to put in free charging stations to attract customers, and you can take advantage of that and save even more money on charging. Supercharging costs, unfortunately, I think are hard to avoid unless you can take advantage of Tesla's referral program and get some free miles doing that. But one way to avoid costs is not charging more than you need to. 
Tesla starts charging more once you get to about 90% as those rates drop down. It costs a lot just to add that last 10%. So if at 90% you've got enough to make it to your destination, it's probably better to just unplug and save that money. Tesla will also charge idle fees while your car is sitting there and not charging. So it's best once you are completely done charging to unplug and move your car. So can you save money with an electric car? Absolutely. Remember, I just covered charging in this video. I did not talk about maintenance at all, which is much less with an electric car. As I mentioned here, I do drive a Tesla Model 3, which is on the higher end in terms of EVs, but there are a lot of cheaper options out there, especially if you don't need a lot of range and just want a good car for commuting around town. If you do want to see how much my Model 3 costs over the first 10,000 miles, I will have that video linked down below. And if you have any questions about cost of charging or just charging in general, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.